routines get a bad rap. There seems to be this general assumption that on a routine your baby is left to cry themselves to sleep. They are only fed when it is feed time. They are kept awake despite being tired. I think this stems from an archaic form of parenting. A leftover from our parents' generation or the one before, where these sorts of routines were fashionable. The truth is that in this day and age, routines are a whole new kettle of fish for babies. Let's cut to the facts surrounding modern routines, or as we like to call them, baby sleep programs. Our program is a natural rhythm for your day, which the majority of babies will generally do themselves more or less, if all their ducks are in a row. There are quite a few ducks to get in a row. Each program is designed to harness a baby's natural dips in energy so they're sleeping at the right times for the right length and feeding at the optimised intervals to allow good milk feeds or food intake and good sleep. Um, not necessarily. I let my first child go with the flow sleep-wise when she was born. But major problems started creeping in around two weeks. She started to love sleeping during the day. So much so, she would then wake, wake at 3am and lay there, wide awake, just because she actually needed some awake time. All babies within specific age ranges biologically require a certain amount of total sleep in a 24 hour period. It is common sense then that if a baby has too much of this total sleep in their daytime hours, they will naturally sleep less at night. So it is true to an extent that most babies will, if everything is lined up, Right? Sleep the perfect amount. Often, however, they just need a helping hand to get those sleep hours happening at the right times, so they're not up partying all night long. <music> Following a guide or a schedule helps you confidently respond to your baby's needs throughout the day, knowing exactly what is happening next and how to soothe them. In my case, as with a lot of new mums, I let my baby dictate the rhythm of our day, not knowing there was an alternative. Not knowing that the amount of sleep time versus awake time was a delicate formula that added up to my baby sleeping or not sleeping at night. Having a more predictable rhythm to your day also means you are able to spot quite quickly when something is amiss. Once my baby was napping and feeding at the optimal times, I was able to see that she had other things going on. which. The program highlighted, namely her severe reflux. Without following the program, we couldn't have pinpointed this condition and treated it as effectively as we did. One thing I loved about having my baby in a more structured approach to her day is that you can plan your own day around when your baby is going to be sleeping. You can make appointments for when the baby is awake or go for walks with friends while the baby is sleeping. As your baby grows, milk feeds will turn into breakfast, lunch and dinner solids, with snacks in between. Our program recommends the feeds to happen at certain times to ensure your baby will have good feeds and a full tummy for any naps without getting a sleep association of being fed to sleep. Feeding a baby right before her nap can mean she's too tired to take a decent feed, and you might develop a feed to sleep association. Both factors can result in your baby not napping for a decent length of time. Following a program or a routine is not starving your baby. If they are hungry before the next feed time, of course, you feed them. You can easily demand feed if that is your preference while using our programs. If your baby is constantly hungry while following the program, it can also mean something else is going on, such as a supply issue, a tongue tie or sickness. Being on our program will highlight these issues so you're able to respond to them. Regularly we are answering this question, like actually every day. Often the tired signs people are going off are misleading, and the general information available out there suggests awake times that are not very accurate. Many people think their babies are tired earlier than the suggested nap times, and they're being put to bed, then catnapping or waking early from naps. Sound familiar? This is because young babies under four months will generally sleep after any amount of awake time if you do something to actively settle them, such as feed, swaddle and rock, or drive in the car. They can go to sleep, but may not actually have been tired enough to sleep longer than 35 to 45 minutes. Babies have a natural 
dip in energy around one to one and a half hours of being awake and can display tired signs here. They are getting tired, but they're not tired enough for a deeper, more restorative nap. Often just changing your activity or going outside is enough to revive your baby till their next nap. For a baby under three months who is the perfect condition for sleep, the reasons for gap napping will be that they are over or under tired. Babies in that age range should be able to sleep for longer periods, all things considered. So having your baby following our program means you're capturing the right times for sleep to allow them that good restorative nap. In babies over three months, self-settling starts to become a factor in your baby's ability to sleep longer than one sleep cycle. Having your baby following our program has a massive positive effect on your baby's ability to learn this skill. No baby will be able to self-settle if they're not tired enough or if they're too overtired to go to sleep. If your baby has struggled to settle, it is likely they haven't been awake for long enough or have been awake for far too long. A baby who has a full tummy and is good and ready to sleep will settle very easily. Being on our program takes out this guesswork. Once your baby is following the program and all conditions are in place to allow your baby to nap well, such as swaddling, white noise, dark broom, your baby should drift off nicely into la la land when it's time for sleep and won't be a struggle at all or feel like you are forcing them into a routine. Me either. There is no law that says having more structure to your baby's day means you're under house arrest. In fact, the only nap we really encourage you to do in your baby's actual bed is their lunch nap. And that's to ensure they have a good stretch of sleep at that nap because it's the most important one of the whole day. Their morning and afternoon naps for younger babies can be done on the go. Car seat, stroller, front pack. So, routines? Not quite what they once were. Babies are not starving hungry on a routine these days. They're not sleep deprived. It is not sleep training. In our vast experience, the majority of babies are happier, calmer, thriving. Of equal importance is that mum is a lot more confident, calmer and in control and getting some much needed sleep. Who can argue with that? Thank you.